Anderson, we heard, you know, yesterday from attorneys for Johns Hopkins say, you know, that they want to win this case to show that medical, that reporters of medical child abuse can still come forward. We that, know that is not the case that you're taking. That's not the case. We're here and they're opposing us because of Beata and Jack Kowalski's ability to decide what the best treatment was for their child. We have a situation here where unqualified physicians second guessed four different specialists as to what Maya Kowalski had and the appropriate treatment. And the treatment worked. Johns Hopkins, with physicians that were not specialized in any way, shape, or form, second guessed Beata Kowalski. And Beata Kowalski stood up for her child and her family. And that was the worst thing she could have done insofar as Johns Hopkins, because she challenged them. She challenged their diagnosis and their treatment. They thought no matter what they said, it was the right thing to do. It wasn't, it was wrong. There's not a single psychologist or psychiatrist in this case, expert that agrees with their quote diagnosis, not a single one. There is no treating physician that agrees with their diagnosis that of lack of CRPS or their criticism of the treatments for Maya. So the case is about individual freedom, the freedom of parents to be able to make their own decisions for what is in the best interest of their child based on their own gathering of knowledge and their own request for information and the advice they received from their physicians. Maya's long-term uh, pediatrician agreed 100% with their decision. Working with what you've just said, now at key here is the issue of over-medication. Now recognizing that she did have that um, um, illness, but the issue here is over-medication as well. Talk a little bit about that, considering that they mentioned such alarming amounts of pain medication as part of the issue? They made the claims with a complete and utter lack of knowledge of either the disease or its treatments. Admittedly, the ketamine procedure in Mexico was new, but it had been performed on over a hundred patients with no complications or problems. And ketamine has been certified for over 50 years for use in this manner. Johns Hopkins has its own ketamine infusion protocol, which we put before the jury. It happened to differ from our outside physician's uh, view of what was the appropriate amount. And keep in mind, they started criticizing the Kowalskis before they even checked with any of the experts that had treated her and had recommended that. And one thing that they never ever explained was why they jumped to this conclusion in the matter of two or three hours one Friday morning afternoon and changed the diagnosis that they themselves had made and was in their records for the preceding year. So then without checking on any of the people that actually knew what was going on and knew that Maya had been through all of the recommendations that they had they went ahead and decided that it was the wrong thing and they had no basis for it. The point is that Maya had been through physical therapy, occupational therapy, psychological CBT therapy. She'd been through all of the therapies that they wanted to put her through and forced her to, to go through in the stay in the hospital. And it's unbelievable that they did not check to learn that she had already been through all of those treatments at, at Tampa General. She'd been through that at Lurie's. She'd been through that with uh, private um, therapists. She'd been through all that. And she'd already been through a course of other medications used. She'd been through a, co a course of opioids, which they, they did not want her to have that. I'm talking about the Kowalskis, but was the only thing available they thought as to pain, and it wasn't until Dr. Anthony Kirkpatrick in Clearwater, who's an expert at it and, in, in, uh, I guess, chairman of the RSD Foundation, diagnosed her, that they even knew about the ketamine. There's absolutely nothing here to indicate that this family 
in any way, shape, or form was frivolous or lacked the, the appropriate information before they made the decisions they made. Up until now, we haven't heard the hospital's side, so I have a few questions now that their testimonies have raised. The psychological component of this case, can you talk a little bit more about that and if there was any element of lack of acknowledging that issue? Well, if the, if the question is lack of acknowledging the issue, there is no question that somebody who is in the level of pain that CRPS patients are in has some psychological component. That's agreed to by everyone. But that's not the determination of whether there was a psychological disorder. The important thing to consider here is the defense has not been able to get a single psychologist or psychiatrist to show up with a diagnosis of Beata or of Maya Kowalski of a psychological disorder. None. And I challenge them on that as, as to whether they've got any retained expert out there who, who's agreeing with them. How is this on, um, on Jack, Kyle, and Maya, especially having to go through the defense has been It has been horrible. Uh, Maya has CRPS lesions appearing. It's not good. Would there be anything else you'd like to add that we haven't thought to ask right now? Well, I think the hospital is trying to portray this as, as saviors of, of the uh, child abuse system. And that's simply not the case. That's, that's not what this case is about. It's about the ability when you've got a government agency aligning with a huge medical organization to make up their minds about something just because they disagreed with the parents. And in failing to do any of the appropriate investigation and research, just decided that because who they are, they had a right to dictate what happened to Maya. And they were wrong. Thank you. Oh, thanks everyone.